Hello, welcome to Sheffield Board Gamers Podcast. This is episode 12. I'm joined today by Tom Cauldron. Uh, hello. Hello, Tom. Hi. Hello. And uh, the other Tom as well from Redwell Games. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hi, uh, thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure to speak to you both. We're going to talk about some games that we've played recently and not at the club this time. <laughs> no. So it's, a, it's a bit of a strange time at the moment. We're all kind of confined to home. Uh, we're not allowed to go out and meet each other. So for such a, a social hobby, it's a bit of a... A bit of a backward step, really, but there are there are ways around it. So we're going to talk about some of those shortly. We're going to have an interview with Dave Weatherall, who's the designer of a game called Rockpool, and um, I'm going to talk about talk about a couple of games that I've played as well. But we've been uh, we've been stuck in the house recently, so um, we've not been able to to go out to the club or anything. Tracy's not working at the moment, so she's a bit bored. So I've probably played more games in the past month than I have <laughs> all year. <laughs> it's, she's uh, yeah, she's uh, quite keen on uh, doing something in the evenings that doesn't involve you know sitting around and and watching TV or whatever. So um, at, at the weekends and uh, and some evenings as well, we play, we, we've played a few games. So I'm, I'm still playing a few, and uh, I've even managed to play some of the games off the shelf of shame. So some games I haven't played yet, I've played some of those as well. Oh, fantastic! Oh, that's good. Uh, done a, done a bit of online gaming as well, which I've not tried before. So we'll we'll, we'll talk about that shortly as well. Uh, what you guys been up to? I've been playing online games, including some with Tom, even though we're several hundred uh, sort of hundred and thirty miles apart. So yes, mm. online yeah, gaming yes. been forward. Um, we were also both at Aircon along with um, what, one of the Sam Samuels of the podcast. He was oh, there yeah. too. So in the before times. Yes, when we when we could go to things like that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> the, the, literally the weekend before it all went nuts. Yeah, it was right before, wasn't it? Um, I saw yeah some of the people uh, that I know on Facebook had been, and obviously yourselves has been as well. And it was right uh, right up to the week, wasn't it? Right up to the uh, to to the point where everything sort of stopped. So yeah, yeah, yes, it was a lot of fun. It it you could tell that things weren't normal. Um, mm. because I've been the previous two years and there were a good number of people on the Friday, on the Saturday and Sunday. I hadn't really done a Friday before, so I can't comment on how busy that was or wasn't compared to previous Fridays. But the Saturday did feel a little quieter. And in the evening, I know some of the Scottish podcasters and people who I was expecting to say hi to didn't make it down. But it was still... A very well run event. It was still enjoyable. I always like going to Aircon and I, I still look forward to next year's one. But you could tell that things were different and coronavirus and everything was beginning to have an effect. We were talking about UK Games Expo that weekend going, oh, will it happen in May? What's going to happen? Because we didn't know that there was going to be a lockdown coming. We thought, well, they have cancelled some sporting events. What is going to happen mm. or not? And also with UK Games Expo being at the end of May, it might have been far enough away for things to have been uh, cancelled and then restart, which clearly, with UK Games Expo now being in August, it was far too close. <laughs> so, hmm. And with the fact that um, NEC, where UK Games Expo would be happening, is now a hospital. So there is no way. <laughs> uh, as yes. is uh, Harrogate at Convention Centre, I believe. As oh, is Harrogate is Convention Centre, yes. Um, yeah. So Salute didn't happen because that's at the XL Convention Centre, which is now an NHS Nightingale. Um, mm -hmm. Aircom is at the Harrogate Convention Centre, which is an NHS Nightingale, and uh, NEC is an NHS Nightingale. So um, if anyone wants to do some board gaming, they're the places to go, surely, or not. <laughs> Obviously, our thoughts go out to everyone who's unfortunately caught and suffered badly or mm -hmm. had family that's passed on and to all the nhs clearly they've done a brilliant job yeah yeah definitely okay so uh on to some games that we've played then so as i say i've played uh, i played quite a few games recently and one of the games that we've played that we quite enjoyed is one called valletta uh this is from 2017 is designed by stefan dora and if his name sounds familiar, he's the guy who designed For Sale as well, if you've played that one. He's designed oh, right, lots yeah. of games, but that's one of his more, more famous ones. That's one of my favourites. Uh, Valletta plays between two and four players, and it takes 20 minutes per player. Uh, it's, um, 
a bit of a history lesson. Uh, Valletta is actually the capital city of Malta. It's a real place. So it's one of those games that's named after a real, <laughs> a real location. It's named after Jean Parisot de Vallette, who defended the island from Ottoman invasion in 1565. Uh, so it's, the, the game's got nothing to do with that, though. <laughs> it's, a de- it's a deck builder, basically. That's the main mechanic, is uh, is deck building. So in deck building, a few years ago, it started off with kind of Dominion and things like that, where deck building was the main mechanic, and that was all, all the game was. And then gradually they started adding a few different things, and then uh, I think games like Clank added... Things like a board and extra ones. And this is a bit like that. This is a deck build, deck building game with a bit extra added a, a board and sort of buildings to build and things like that. So deck builder plus. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's got, uh, d- three decks of cards. Uh, the green cards give you resources and you use those real resources to build buildings. There are some blue cards which convert, uh, one resource into another. So you might turn two coins into three bricks or something like that. And then there's some yellow cards which give you points. So the points let you uh, turn resources into points. They also let you give you points for buildings and other, other things. So there, there are three different decks and they're all, um, uh, not all of the cards are used in each game. So out of all the green cards, for example, you might only use half of those and that, and that builds up, uh, that, that's the cards that you can use in that particular game. So e- each game is going to be different in that you've got a random setup each time. So it's going to be, it's going to be slightly different. So you uh, you play cards out of your hand. You've got a, you've got your own deck of these little little cards, and so that, that you'll get resources like the usual kind of stuff: stone, uh, coins, bricks, wood, things like that. And then you use the uh, resources to get to build buildings. And when you build a building, you'll put a building out on the uh, on the board, and also you'll get another card as well. So the card will be real, related to that building. So if it's a woodworker, for example, you might get, uh, it might allow you to play that card to go more, uh, to build, to get more wood. Or a stonemason will get you more stone. Uh, so that'll go in your discard pile. The cards that you played go in your discard pile and then you draw again from your, from your, uh, deck that you've got. And then once your deck runs out, you shuffle your discard pile and put it back into your deck like a, like, like you do any other deck builder. So the, uh, the, the extra thing that this card, uh, sorry, that this game has got is the buildings themselves. So uh, you can build a building using the resources you've got. So you pay the resources, you get a, a card to put in your deck, and you also uh, build this building. But the buildings could be upgraded as well. So when you upgrade a building, you you uh, pay the resources again, and then you flip the card over, and then it's worth double then. It's worth double the victory points uh, that's on it. And also you might, that might get you some extra resources and things as well. In the middle of the board, there's a long track, and that's where uh, Jean Perso de Vallette lives on this track. So he starts <laughs> off at the start of this track. And then as he plays certain cards, he'll move along the track. And the game ends when either he reaches the end of this track or it's also a scoring track if one of the players reaches the end. Or if you've built all your buildings, that's another game end. Uh, once the game finishes, uh, what you do is you take your discarded cards, you take your deck and you shuffle them together. And you play through your entire deck again from scratch, from from the top. So if you've only bought a card in the last round, for example, that'll go into your discard pile. That'll get shuffled up with your with your deck, and then you get to play through the entire the entire deck again. Uh, once that's done, you uh, you count up all your points. So you get points for any yellow cards you've got. You get points for buildings that you built. You also get a few points for any leftover resources you've got, and most points wins. So uh, me me and Tracy, we've uh, we've we've played this a few times. I've only played it two player. And um, it's it's quite a good um, kind of deck building game in that you've got all, all the cards are kind of laid out at the start, so you kind of know uh, you know what they are, and you know what you, you can kind of work towards a strategy to go for. And because it's a random setup, you don't always get the same cards out. So uh, in, in one particular game that we played, there was, wasn't a lot of stone available, so you'd only got uh, the stone that you got in your starting hand, which is just like one stone, and it's not really enough to build some of the bigger buildings that might need two or three. So uh, at that point there, you can either save up your stone and try and build those uh, by building, you know, building it slowly, or you could go another route and try and get more wood or more brick or something like that. The yellow cards, the scoring cards, are different every game as well. So some give you points for uh, coins, for example. So for every three coins you get, you might get five points. Some do a similar thing for wood. Some just give you straight points. So there's two knights in the game, and each knight will give you two points just straight up without having to convert anything. So in one of the games I played, I got these two knights into my deck, and then every time they come around, they give you a couple of extra points. 
Um, so it's quite, quite, uh, yeah, quite a variety of different things that you can that you can actually do in it. I think the playtime is a, is about right, about twenty minutes per player. So I think for a two player game, it's uh, it's pretty good. We can do it in like 40, 40 minutes like, quite easily. We can we can finish the game. That that forty minutes was that the first time you played it, or now that you've played it a couple of times? No, no, now I've played it a couple of times. It, it it is pretty straightforward. It's not it's not like hugely complicated or anything. Oh, that's um, cool. All, all the cards have text on there that tell you exactly what they do. Um, the rules are only like three pages on a oh, wow. pre, pre-pitch seat, so it's so it's really straightforward. Yes, we can we can play it in like 35, 40 minutes easily with two players. And uh but I think I think probably with more players it might drag out a little bit more. There's not much to do while it's not your turn. So you know, if other players are playing their cards and you have to see a way for them. There there are cards that, you know, affect during your turn. You can steal resources from other other players sometimes. Some of the cards will let you do that. There's like a tax collector card. Um, so I think with four players, it might drag on a little bit too long and maybe a bit too, for, you know, the, the complexity of the game might not quite be enough to, to put up with that. But as a two player game, it's really good. Yeah. It's, a, it's well under an hour. Like I said, 40, 45 minutes. Play it quickly. Um, it's good fun putting your deck together and working out, you know, a strategy of what you want to go for. Uh, yeah. like most other deck builders, you can get rid of cards out of your deck. Um, that you don't need anymore. So if you've got uh, a couple of woodworkers that are giving you four stone every time, you, uh, uh, sorry, woodworkers that give you four wood every time. <laughs> that, that's impressive woodworkers. We could do magic. Can, yeah, you can get rid of the basic ones out of your, out of your deck quite easily. So yeah, it's a, it's a good game and uh, quite quite enjoy playing it. it. It's one of those as well. It's a couple of years old. It's from 2017 and I don't think it did very well on release. So uh, we we picked it up like dirt cheap. So I think it was like twelve pounds or something. Um, so it's available and it's out there, you know, to to buy for quite a quite a low price. And I I, I do quite like deck builders as well. It's one of my favorite one of my favorite uh, mechanisms. So it was a good a good fit for me, mm-hmm. and a good a good family game I think. So that, that's it what I've been nice. playing. That's yeah. the letter. Yeah. Yeah, it's that traditional kind of German Euro kind of. Uh, uh, I don't know who the artist is, but um, I think he's done quite a few games. It looks it looks like that familiar kind of art. Yeah, uh, Clemens Frank. Very similar oh, yeah. to um, Cracks of Quedlinburg kind of stylish. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, with so many games being released these days, I mean, even some really good ones are sort of uh, not not uh, managing to gain enough traction to stand out from the crowd. It, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I mean, think this is an, I- lot of bugs an ideal have. game for an expansion. If there was an expansion ever to come out, this would be like a, a perfect pick for it. But if they had one in the works, I doubt, I doubt if it'll actually ever ever turn up. Um, but yeah, you're right, Tom. I think a lot of games have, uh, you know, we, we're kind of spoiled for choice at the moment. Aren't yeah, we? A lot of stuff. There's so many yeah. great games out there. Yeah, yeah. Too many games, not enough time. Except yeah, for at the moment. Too many games. Except, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's too much time and not enough games, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, it's, you'd have to be crazy to try putting out new games now. I mean, who would yeah. have done? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but someone just had a Kickstarter successfully complete, haven't they, sir? Uh, they have, yeah. Um, they, they may have done, yes. <laughs> yes. yes, well, well yes, done, Tom. Categor- Catego- yes, categorical. Um, and and yep. it hit its target with plenty of time to spare. Um, yeah. Yes. That's brilliant, yeah. Had a little really bit over. Good. Congratulations. Which is good. Uh, yeah, so this is... Uh, Bez of Stuff by Bez, so sort of relaunching her L deck, uh, which yes. is a game system with lots of different games, except she's decided to sort of um, concentrate it down a bit, so just releasing a, um, a deck with like one game in, as in here are the rules for this game, and by the way, way you can play other games with, with, with these cards. Uh, so the game that she chose for the, for this, the first one of these, uh, was the game that I designed for her, which is Category Kel. So technically, it's a game system being published, but it's my game. Is the focal point rules in it? Yes. Anyway, my name's on a box. It's great. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm well deserved. That's really good. Yeah, and the, the mm. artwork looks really nice. Um, Bez has been putting up yeah. um, uh, different uh, uh, illustrations of the of the deck and how it's going to look. The graffiti kind of inside inspired. Uh, yeah. So artwork, the original. The original deck was, um, it, well, the cards are two letters and a pattern, which is the border. Uh, and she's doing a whole new set of cards with a sort of graffiti style lettering mm. 
uh, for the cards because it fits the sort of the theme of the, the feel of the game is more sort of fast and frenetic, and mm. uh, so you thought graffiti would be a good fit for that. Yeah, I can't wait to see the finished uh, finished game. Looks great. Yeah, yeah. So, well, yes, and I've been playing uh, games with the Wibble Plus Plus deck with you, Tom, and uh, the lovely yes. Bears um, using her game and others online during this time. So, um, yeah, Beth is doing uh, regular online meetups for people to sort of get together and play um, various games. She's trying to do uh, to create new games that can be played um, over video conferencing. We we've played some standard games as well. We had a couple of games with just one. Yeah, um, and we had a game, a very fun game of uh, Vote Me the other day with uh, four people and someone else on the comments uh, voting for us. Yes, good. <laughs> Yeah, there's a number of games that are good for um, online. I think was Categor. Did I join in partway through a game of Categorical, or which one was that? Uh, that... We can't. Uh, Categorical doesn't really work over okay. video conferencing, but uh, it, yeah. it was which is what is the gifting one? I, mi- I don't. Recall. Yeah, I missed the name Gift of that. Which is Abel. another game yeah. that they've just come up with. Yes, that that was a lot of fun. Which is sort of a creative thing using the cards as a as a uh, inspiration. Yes, so the principle is um, for the online game you had Bez holding up a card and whoever had won the last round the first card um, was the name of a person you're buying a gift from and they had yep. to choose um, the name using either the top or the bottom letter. Then the second card she held up um, the person who was providing the information then had to say what the profession was of the person you're buying a gift for. Um, so I think we had an astronaut at some point. Um, yeah. And so it builds build a very quick sketch of this person. Yeah. And then you've uh, got, a, got a character. And uh, yeah. then all the other players have to uh, try and think of a gift for this character. So two more cards. You've got to use one letter from one card and one letter from another card and think of a gift, like some... Psychic underpants, or a <laughs> uh, a lovely elephant, or yes. <laughs> so you've got to come up with a gift and then justify why that would be the perfect gift for that person. Yeah, <laughs> for Jeffrey the astronaut. And, and it really helped the fact that you only need one person with the game because they just held yes. up the cards, and that and that was the other advantage when um, playing just one as well. Um, yeah, you only need one person to play the game. Um, it's got rules that are very easy to explain in five minutes online, and you don't need anything else than that. Um, and that, and that's also why um, Vote Me was working as well, because you need cards from one person. Um, I've actually put um, a small version on the website for fr- as a free downloadable print and play during the lockdown, oh, wow. so people can try that's it good. out. Well, it works online. Um, mm. You don't need the cards for online play. You kind of do for face-to-face play. So I still think that if people like it, when you actually get to meet up in groups, um, it'd be something good to collect and actually use the cards for face-to-face play because you need them really for that. But online, you lose that part. And I've just stripped it down, so less options, but people can play it online and try it and enjoy it. And it, mm. as you said, Tom someone it was even voting in the comments so that works yes I, and also i think bez has released an inexpensive print and play of the wibble deck is that right tom that's right in the glorious font comic sans right <laughs> yes <laughs> so you can print and play your own version of the wibble deck and um play and all the rules for all the L deck games are on uh, are on uh, Bez's website stuffbybez.com. Yes, I have been trying um, a couple of times to do uh, some more technical game playing using video cameras pointing at boards and things, and that's worked all right. Mm-hmm. I had a game with uh, me and Paula versus Jen and Lewis against. Uh, well, not versus. We were, we were uh, playing Pandemic. Um, All right. Okay. <laughs> which was um, which worked quite well. They they had one one call was the camera pointing at the board, and another call was us looking at each other. So we had two calls going on at the same time. 
Hmm. So th- they were doing all the board and the, de- and the cards and everything, but we had a copy of the game as well, so we got out the cards when we were told that we'd drawn this so we could see everyone's yeah. hands, which made it a bit yeah. easier. And, uh, and you'd, you, I mean, you'd be happy to know that we, we beat the disease. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the pandemic was defeated. Uh, with like one turn to go, but you know, it was, it was good. Uh, and we've tried it with, um, obviously just one works as well. Uh, it's a great game for online playing. Mm-hmm. Um, but you don't need, uh, the whole setup for that. Uh, we had a game of code names the other night. Oh. Uh, that was us pointing a camera at the uh, at the words. Yes, years back, and I mean probably about six, seven years ago, I managed to play a war game online. So someone had it set up. Mm. That was more interesting. So it, it's definitely not the end of the world, the fact you have to play games online. But wasn't expecting something as complex as uh, Pandemic and others to be able to be played down um, sort of videos. And yeah. stuff. So that's good. Yeah, obviously, some games it's a bit difficult to do when you're um, shuffling cards and having secret hands and things. That would be uh, mm. a bit more difficult to do. Yes, I th- I think Vorpal Hit or Vorpal Someone was designing an online system um, for um, basically to be able to play games online and had a setup to do a hidden camera option. So the person who had the game could kind of put a card and it went to the appropriate people and things like that um and it did yeah decently on kickstarter but not quite enough to fund i think they got to 90 percent. i bet mm. people are now kicking themselves that they hadn't backed when they're thinking oh maybe <laughs> maybe i shouldn't and it enabled it to have gone live because that would have been brilliant by now uh, pa- pandemic is a good one because you kind of play with open cards don't you you kind of share information there's nothing yes. kind of hidden so yeah. That's a good one to play. And, and uh, did you see the board? Okay, could you see what was going on all right and everything? Uh, we could. It was clear enough. Obviously, it depends on the equipment that you're using. I mean, I don't think that would have worked the way around with us pointing our camera at the board because we, we just got a rubbish camera. But, right. <laughs> yeah, but we could see there's all right. Yeah. It worked well enough. Yeah, I never thought of trying that. But, uh, yeah, it's a good, good idea, that, yeah. And then there's uh, other online options for, uh, like, board game arena and things. We've had a mm. few games of that. Yeah, I've tried that out as well. Um, I've tried uh, Board Game Arena, uh, and I, I, I like that one because it kind of does all the rules for you. It, yeah. um, like some of the other ones, like um, you, you have to uh, move everything around yourself and you have to yeah. sort of manage the Tabletop rules Simulator and Tabletopia, that just sort of gives you, gives you everything just sort of in a virtual reality world. If you have to give up a token or a cube or something, you have to have to, to physically click on, the token, click on that move it over there. somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. Whereas Board Game Arena kind of does it all for you. And there there are loads of games on there as well. So I was surprised at how many there actually are. Mm, yeah. that, I, that I sort of recognised and you know and knew how to play already. Uh-huh. Yeah, quite a few uh, uh vari- there's a good variety of games as well. There's like quick card games and there's more involved kind of longer games as well. So Board Game Arena is definitely good. Uh, the first time I tried to use it, um it, it was quite slow. And I think they were putting a message up saying that the um, the servers were slow because they were being overloaded. They have had a lot of people on there. Yeah, last yeah month, a lot so. of people were jumping on there. But that seems to have settled down a little bit now. I've, I've played it in the past week and it's been fine. It's not been. Yeah, they've been they've been working hard to improve their servers and their uh, the the whole. Experience. Yeah, yeah, and they've lim- limited some of the uh, capacity as well. So um, it's not yeah. not trying to do the a lot of the stuff that it was trying to do before. What, one thing I saw as well is, um, if you've got a tablet, you can go into Google Play and there's a Board Game Arena app. Oh, so you can play it all on a tablet. If you've got like an, uh, I don't know if it's on an iPad, but I've got an Android tablet mm-hmm. and it's definitely available on there. It's a, it's a beta one. It's a, it's an early access one. I, I presume it'll be available if you search for it. But yeah, if you're, um, uh, if you're not, not got, you know, not in front of a laptop, or if you've not got a desktop or something like that, if you've got a tablet, you can uh, you can load that up. And I played uh, Seven Wonders last night in bed, so that was good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, just this afternoon, Paul and I were having a game of Stone Age against a couple of other people. Uh, uh, yeah. So we had the the game on board game arena, me on one yeah. computer and Paul on her laptop, uh, yeah. and we also had them on uh, a voice chat as well, so we could have right. a bit of the experience of you know table talk and yeah uh, chatting. Because uh, yeah. sometimes just playing an online game where you do your move and then you see the cards move for the other person's move, 
Uh, it yeah. feels a, it doesn't get the social experience that you have in, in live things. But if you've got a voice chat as well, it kind of goes a long way towards doing that. But it's about the people, not the games. Uh, what, what about solo gaming? Have you played any games solo or? Um... Uh, I haven't. Um, no, because all my solo games are currently <laughs> packed up still. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they're still in Sheffield, though. This one, they're, they're, they're still safely in storage in Sheffield, which mm. I will see at some point. I've I've not really one for solo gaming, to be honest. I think it, uh, if it, if I was going to play a game, I'd probably do something else instead. Yeah. It's not not very often that I, that I play a game sort of on my own. And the same. Yeah. Um, there there are a lot of options though. For I mean, for people who do like that kind of thing, there's a lot of games that do have solo modes. If not in the box, then usually you can go to Board Game Geek, and sometimes there'll be a solo mode that either somebody's designed or you know an official one from the publisher. Perhaps uh, that's worth checking out as well. Oh yeah, there's a yeah. big market for it as well as um, the success mm. of Mark's YouTube channel, uh, not Board Gaming. Yeah, um, proves. Let's do the yeah, last month's podcast for more and more details. Yeah, to- talking to YouTube and podcasts as well. It's a good time to catch up now. So uh, we've got a bit more spare time, and you know we're stuck in the house and things. So. Uh, yeah. YouTube channels, podcasts, uh, reading books, things like that. Um, there's a lot of um, a lot of stuff out there. Some some of the uh, some of the board game channels, you know, the the review channels are still going, but just doing it remotely, like Das Tower and things like that. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of people doing playthroughs and things. Um, uh, I've got a backlog of podcasts to catch up on, so I'm going to go through those at some point and listen to those. You, 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 uh, I'm not doing it yet because I usually listen to podcasts while I'm in the car while I'm travelling forwards and backwards to work. So I'm not I've not been doing that. So <laughs> I'm a bit behind on my podcasts, but I've got a nice little uh, Bluetooth speaker so I can uh, I can flick that on and uh, listen to a podcast. You know when it's quiet, and it's been it's been really nice weather here recently as well, hasn't it? It's been nice. Oh, it's been lovely. Uh, sun's been shining, so I can sit outside and do that as well. That's mm-hmm. a good uh, a good way to pass on a bit of time. And get some uh, get a bit of a gaming fix as well by listening to listening to other people and watching their YouTube and things. I've been homeschooling part of mm. the time, um, and um, but also I do have some games that are more family friendly. So one of the things I've been playing with my son was Warren Wars, which I picked up last year from Kickstarter, and I tr- I got it and it arrived in the post. I think it was summertime last year. Tried it with him. And it didn't go down well, and I went, oh, crumbs. You know, I've just bought a stinker <laughs> of a game. I was wrong, because at the time he was six, and it clearly says ages seven plus. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's one of those games which you go, it's not that difficult. Surely he can pick it up. And the artwork is nice. He liked the artwork, but he was struggling with reading. And actually, the the barrier to entry for him was he was a six-year-old, and he had a six-year-old sort of, you know, he wasn't as one of the sort of major readers of his class at that point, but an extra sort of um, nine months worth of reading coming along. And he's actually able to read the cards and understand what's going on. And so we played it last week or so, and he loves it. So when it has um, on the side ages, whatever, sometimes the designers actually know what the (laughs) heck they're talking about. Um, Because as I said, yeah, it's not a difficult game. Um, but it is a case of for all the artwork and the for, the font size is on the smaller side, but for seven year olds, I can attest. I've got a seven year old. It's mm. readable, and so therefore, uh, so he loved it. And it's a nice, simple game where you are trying to get carrots um, and then in front of you, and then play um, rabbits. Um, you need to have enough carrots for each rabbit you're playing. Um, and whichever card you're playing in your turn, sometimes you just play the one. So draw a card, play a card. But some of the cards you play, um, whether it's an action or um, a rabbit or a carrot, enable you to do extra things. So actually, you can end up at a point with several cards in your hand and you play several in a turn just because of how everything goes. So it's a nice little game, um, rattles along at a good pace. Um, it's for two to four players and it works really and, it, and it's in a teeny tiny box. It's got some, I don't know exactly how many cards, 120 cards, and it is literally the space for 120 cards. So it's great in terms of size, um, which is why I've still got it, because it doesn't take up a lot of space whilst I'm still waiting for the house move to sort out. So That's the one with all the rabbit puns, isn't it? 
It is the one with all the rabbit puns, yes. yes. Um, they were there at um, a uh, Playtest Sheffield session in, I think, April or May last year. Um, and yes, you have got so many rabbit <laughs> puns, it's untrue. Um, but the artwork is by the designer, one of the designers, I want to say Emily, but I could get a name wrong, and so I do apologise. Um but yes, the couple that are the publishers and designers are lovely. Um, the artwork is brilliant. Um, I'll just rattle through and find some of the puns. So you have got Robo Bun. Um, you've got um, Ribbit, which obviously sounds like rabbit. And the phrase is even bunnies like cosplay. And there's an abunnable snowman. Is that a rabbit dressed as a frog? It, it's a rabbit dressed as a frog, exactly. <laughs> So it's so very obvious that I can tell you the pun and you can work it out. What are the other ones? Oh, there's a dust bunny, which happens to be a rabbit in a French maid's <laughs> outfit. Um, who framed this bunny? I like Attila the Bun as well. Attila the Bun. The best one that I like is P-E-T-A, rabbit. So um, that that's, uh, and obviously dressed in a Peter rabbit, but carrying a placard. <laughs> so... <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Great puns, really nice artwork, and it suits the game um, brilliantly. So, um, and and as I said, uh, does work well for seven year olds. I can attest to that. Six year olds, maybe not so great. The only other game I've really played was a few weeks ago, actually. It seemed it seemed like an age was when I was at Aircon. So um, I was had a spare 20 minutes and was able to play test one of Dave Weatherall's games. I've forgotten its name. Tom, can you remember? It's the Yin Yang one. Uh, I think it was called High Low. High Low, that's it. Yes. yes. Name, couldn't remember, even though it's simple. Gameplay, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, and the concept was ridiculously simple, which was mm. you're trying to get... Exact. It was high-low zero, wasn't it, Tom? That's it. Oh, that's it, yeah. Yes. See, we'll get there <laughs> in the end. Um, <laughs> um, and the prince- yeah, Dave, Dave Weatherall's always been working on lots of games. He did, did uh, he does um, role-playing as well. I yes. don't know if you know Empire. Uh, it's a big lot where you get lots of people dressing up and walking around in a field, occasionally pretending to fight each other. But he does the uh, does a character in that, which who's sort of the head of like a merchant guild or something. And one of the things he does is uh, sell games, uh, which which are sort of in the world of the Empire game. He is a person selling games <laughs> to other characters, but they're real games as well, and you know, yes, um, and based around various elements of the of the world, so people can uh, play them in real life as well. And he's he's just he's made loads of those. He's turned some of them into more general public games as well. Um, yeah, it's good to, that he's uh, starting to get some success with his games as well. He's been around for a long time. I um, first met him with um, where he's wearing an amazing top hat with lots of his lots of colourful cards. Yes, Kaleido um, cards in them. Kaleido cards, which he's been working on for years. I think the first aircon that I went to, he got me to try to test them. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I. Saw Clyder Cards back in 2017, I think it is, at UK Games Expo. Uh, that's when mm. I first met him. Um, so, Hilo Zero, really nice game. You had circular cards, um, which really fitted the theme with uh, Chinese characters to help differentiate. So, you had different colours, different values, um, but also for the different colours, there was different symbols. Um, and the aim of the game was after at the end of each round, you had sort of three turns within a round. And at the end of a round, you wanted to have zero points. But if you didn't have zero points, you wanted to be the highest or the lowest number. So um, having one point or two point was fairly rubbish. You'd want to have plus seven or minus eight or something, a really big number to compensate um, if you couldn't get zero. Um and so I think you had six, it's either six or seven cards in your hat, and they had to total zero. And so each round you'd discard a card and collect a card. 
and it was that simple and then you'd score um critically it was easy to pick up easy to play plenty of thinking required but it was great i think there's five of us playing sufficient interaction between all players which made it enjoyable and with the simplistic artwork but effective artwork i thought it was a really good looking game and a great package altogether yeah it, was, uh, it gave nice decisions of whether you go for the big risk or just give up on it and go for something different yeah it's it's worked very nicely quite a lot of maps to do but uh, only on a simple kind kind of yeah adding and subtracting so yeah, how did you find um, Rockpool? I didn't get a chance to play that. Uh, Rockpool is uh, a game that is published with Gibsons uh, for kids. Uh, I tried a, a playtest version, a prototype version of it uh, when we went down to London. What would that be? Would that be in November? Um, no, we went sure. to London in the summer, I think it was. Uh, this is Board Game yeah. Devcon, wasn't it? Board Game Devcon 4. Yes. That was right. August uh, 2019. August, right, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to try to push that then. <laughs> Which is pretty much finished. And it's, um, obviously it's a, a game for kids, but you had, uh, four middle-aged men, <laughs> um, trying to, <laughs> trying to play it. Uh, it was, um, a really charming little game where you're all sort of teams of children and a dog, uh, trying to collect, um, sets of cards from what turns up in the rock pool. So you're turning over lots of cards one at a time into the rock pool until someone shouts something to try and claim them. But what you shout depends on what uh, the top card is. So you might have to shout starfish or rock pool or fetch if it's a dog toy or various other things. So there's a lot of laughter about uh, when people <laughs> shout the wrong thing or shout uh, rock pool when they didn't have the right person to collect that sort of shell or something because they've already been used. It's it's simple, but the uh, interaction of uh, having to try and remember the right things is uh, really funny. Uh, and it all adds up to people scoring lots of points. And it's got the theme of kids going for a nice, fun day in the, in the rock pool. And uh, the dog always gets to go for a swim. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, there's a nice little uh, social message about uh, one of the things you can do is collect... Uh, collect rubbish from, oh, yeah. from the beach and you score points for that. Yeah, and I like the box. I, I hadn't seen the components, but the box is a really good the box is lovely. Um, yeah. style as well. So, yes. It's a Fine. shell-shaped box, which possibly doesn't um, stack well with other boxes. But, you know, it, it, it looks really nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you wanted to absolutely optimise your shelf like, like I do, then uh, it would be an annoying shape. But, <laughs> but it looks really nice. I, I've, got a, I've got a copy to... Uh, to give to my nieces once I can actually <laughs> give anything to my nieces. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we talked a lot about Dave Wetherall. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, um, uh, he's going to be uh, the star <laughs> of the show. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so Dave, if you're listening to this, please make sure your head doesn't swell too big. <laughs> yeah. Hi, uh, it's Tom Lovewell here. I've met up with Dave Weatherall again um, at Aircon. I say again, I first met him in 2017 at UK Games Expo at a um, p- playtester, publisher, designer, meet and greety thing on, I think, the Friday night. Um, and you had, as memory serves, Collider cards then. Yep, that's right. Um, UK Games Expo was the first time I was exhibiting, and I was exhibiting a game I was then hoping to kickstart called Collider Cards, which actually I, I had previously exhibited at the previous Aircon as a bit of a warm-up for, for UK Games Expo. So what's happened with Collider Cards next? That's a f- three years ago-ish, yeah? yeah? Um, so to be honest, it's not changed very much since I was exhibiting it at Aircon and UK Games Expo. It was a finished product at that stage. It looked I- awesome. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and, and people loved it, so I was really pleased with it. I was planning to kickstart it, and I used UK Games Expo to check that it was ready for kickstarting, and everyone was saying, yes, get on and do it. Unfortunately, from my personal perspective, real life got in the way, and I was too busy doing other things, so I have yet to kickstart it. I'm speaking from experience, yeah, life gets in the way of kickstarts, and yeah. I completely know where you're coming from. So, is that... So you're not kickstarting it now? What's happening with it? So at 
uh, UK Games Expo last year. I got approached. In fact, I've been approached by several publishers interested Ooh. in it. Um, one of them at UK Games Expo was particularly interested. We followed up further at Essen and then at London Toy Fair this year. And they're currently evaluating it with a view to bringing it out in 2021. So I'm hoping that will happen. Me um, too. Me too. So, yeah, very much looking forward to that. I've always felt with Kaleido Cards, it's got so much potential that it's something, if I had kickstarted it, that would have been a stepping stone to signing up with a mainstream large, large publica- uh, publisher. Because uh, I think it is a mass market game and uh, hopefully it will be out there soon so for those of you I know a lot of people have been wanting to see it for some time now I I assure you it will come out at some stage and I hope you'll all enjoy it when it does you promised me on that Dave because I want to buy it and play it because I think it's a game that I'll love and my son will love it as well great Um, and and for those who've not seen Collider Cards just to say a little bit about it it's a a deck of 100 cards which have coloured backgrounds words on them which are colours and each colour uh, each coloured word is written in a different colour uh, font. So there's lots of mini games you can play with this one deck of 100 cards. Each of the mini games are fast to play and learn. They go two to five minutes or so to play. Uh, massive of masses of variety, and it does mess with your brain a bit. But it, it, it's all great fun, and everyone seems to love it. Yeah. Well, the other game of yours that has caught my eye very much is um, your new one, Rockpool, that's... Um, you got it. Um, Gibson Games has picked it up, and it's looked awesome. Um, Samuel and Tom, the other Tom, Tom Cauldron, uh, played it this weekend with you at uh, Aircon, and I've heard great things from them. So uh, could you tell me a bit about it, please, Dave? Uh, yes, so Rockpool, it's uh, just been released by Gibson Games um, in their Little Gibson's range. Um, and it's a game I pitched to them actually at UK Games Expo a couple of years ago. They loved it. So in terms of what the game is, it's a family game aimed at both children and adults. Um, it's a card collection game where you play a team of children and their dog who are trying to collect shells from a beach before the tide comes in. Um, now, as well as collecting shells, you're also clearing up rubbish. Oh, um, so an environmental friendly kind of theme-ish? Uh, very much so. So what I wanted, without, without going heavy on the environmental theme, what I wanted to do was have a game which promoted discussions within families about... Uh, uh, about the importance of clearing up rubbish and litter and, and the damage uh, plastic can do to the oceans and the like. So in the game, there is rubbish which appears, and you can either ignore it, uh, in which case it's detrimental to you, or you can actively clear it away, which can improve your chances of winning. But it's a push. the game itself is a push-your-luck game, so there's always a, a question of choice as what stage do you focus on clearing away the rubbish, or do you try and collect the, the shells, which are another way that you can uh, win points and uh, end up with your kids paddling in the rock pool at the end, because the way you win the game is by having the most children or dogs paddling in the rock pool. That sounds awesome. That's a nice little thematic end, rather than just who's got the most points, you'd kind of know what you're aiming for and can visualise it. I think that's a really great idea there, Dave. Yeah, thanks. Uh, the, the other thing I think which people love about the game is um, in your turn, you're, you're turning over cards. It's cards are in piles of stone, so you're turning over a stone to reveal what's underneath. And underneath the card, there may be the shells or the rubbish or creatures like, uh, like crabs, which steal away shells, or starfish. Um, so people in turn turn these car- turn over these stones and turn cards into the middle of the rock pool. At any stage, any of the players can shout out uh, to empty the rock pool. So they can shout, rock pool! And then collect all the, sh- the different cards in the pool. Or if there's rubbish on the top of the pile, they can shout, rubbish! Which is always fun to shout in a game. No, that, um, that's good. And if there's a starfish on the top, you shout, starfish. And if you want to send your dog in to collect a bone or a stick or, or a starfish, you shout, mm. fetch. So kids love the shouting out of the, uh, the, the words in the game. It, it encourages people to have, have a good time. It gets a bit of laughter going. Uh, that, no, that sounds good. Yeah, I know my son really likes the kind of games where there's that interaction with, you know, he's played Quirk a lot. Yeah. Um, this say, feel, feels like that kind of game, and I bet his friends would love it too. Yeah, and uh, it, since you've mentioned Quirk, let me just mention that Emma, who who uh, yeah, my uh, good friend, uh, publishes Quirk, uh, that has also been picked up by Gibsons. I, I think 
Um, it, it's coming out um, at UK Games Expo this year. Yeah. So, so um, she's done amazing work with that. It's all her artwork. There's the Mischief Monster. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one too. So, yeah, so I, definitely a game to, to look out for. And, yeah, uh, Emma... I think I might have met Emma originally oh. at Aircon as well, actually. She was here a, last year. Yeah, um, no, I think or, or, or at UK yeah. Games Expo. People will recognise you by your distinctive top hats, won't they, Dave? And you've been an ambassador at UK Games Expo, a games ambassador, haven't you? Yes, so at UK Games Expo, I for the last two years, I've been a volunteer there as one of the, the blue-shirted ambassadors who wander around trying to make sure everyone's enjoying themselves and uh, help out the uh, visitors and just make sure the whole uh, uh, show runs smoothly. Uh, so... Those of us with blue shirts are called ambassadors, but there's also the yellow shirted uh, volunteers. Everybody at Games Expo who works and volunteers there, they just do a great job making people feel welcome. So the nice thing, and from my point of view, about volunteering at UK Games Expo is it's also a chance to wander around, meet people, talk to people, talk to publishers, talk to players, uh, talk to other game designers. Um, so it's, it's a great opportunity. And uh, I should also say, when I'm not volunteering as an ambassador there, I also quite often help out on the Playtest UK stand. You do, yeah. That's well, we first met as a sort of Playtest uh, designer, publisher kind of thing, wasn't it? And you've been involved. You went to Board Game Dev on four last. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, uh, I've been to three of the four board games. Three out of the four well, cons, which are run by Bez. They are run by um, Bez, and, yes. And uh, and Andy and, and Bez and Andy do a great job with those. Oh, if you're do. if you're a, a game uh, independent game designer or publisher or whatever, definitely look them up. Uh, they're great, great fun, good chance of sharing knowledge and experience. Yeah. Tom and I talked about um, BG DevCon four in a previous episode. So right. and yeah. Um, so what what playtest other than UK Games Expo? playtest uh do you, are you involved in any other playtest groups uh so playtest uk is is a group uh, a whole series of different regular meetups yes and they meet up in i think it's about 18 different cities it has expanded maybe it's we've got one in 20. sheffield there's yeah. one in leeds now as well yeah. um so there are several in London. I normally go to one in central London near Victoria, which meets on a on a Sunday afternoon once a month. There's also in a, in a pub called the Jugged Hare near Victoria. Uh, we also meet there alternate Monday evenings. Um, and then I've begun going to the Playtest uh, UK event at Ludacrist, the Lu Ludacrist board game cafe in oh, Croydon. Cool. So that's alternate Tuesday nights and Scott uh, of Minerva Games tends to run that. So, yeah, if you're a if you're listening to this and you're a someone who's designed games or thinking of designing games, just come along to Playtest. Look look up Playtest UK on on Facebook or on Meetups. A uh, friendly group of board game designers are uh, always willing to help each other out and share ideas and knowledge. Yeah, I will agree. I've been to several in different uh, locations and they're always friendly. So, and you were here as well at Aircon. And yeah. the playtest zone as well. Um, yeah, and, and I think there's there's a difference in playtesting with other game designers, which is a yeah. uh, a brilliant way of developing prototypes and just checking the the basic ideas. And you've got other people who don't necessarily expect a finished game. Yeah, but you can take along an idea and you can bounce ideas around and try each other's games out, and everyone's in the same position. So there's that sort of playtesting. Um, at a, a, a convention like Aircon or at UK Games Expo, generally I I take to those much more advanced games, yeah. games I'm about to pitch to publishers. So I will take a game where I want to just test it out with a whole variety of different members of the public uh, who are going to pick up the game and see what it's like to play it. Because you do get a different uh, perspective from... Uh, gamers or general members of the public than you might from other game designers so it's it's always good to try different types of play testing uh sometimes i'll do blind play testing as well where people will pick up the rules and try and uh, just observe how they how they play the game themselves brilliant thank you very much for talking to me this um afternoon dave and i hope you enjoy the rest of aircon thank you very much tom always a pleasure bye bye Right, well, uh, thanks for joining me, uh, both Tom Cauldron, thank you very much. Thank you. And Tom from Bridwell Games. Thank you. 
Uh, as he as he mentioned, you can get uh, a version of Vote Me online. Yes. And Bez has various things uh, free to download as well. So go ahead and uh, and, and look up look up those. Uh, I would encourage you to have a look at the forums as well because there's a lot of people on the forums at the moment organising games, uh, both online and um, over various methods of uh, of online play. So have a look at the forums, uh, and there'll be some some games there that you can that you can join in. It is too late to get join in on the Star Realms tournament, but that is very exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Star, uh, Star Realms tournament's ongoing at the moment, so uh, I'm not doing very well, unfortunately. <laughs> I think I won one game out of about five so far. So You're hustling them, surely, Rick. It's, it's early days, early days. Yeah. It could all turn around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Time for the comeback. But that's good fun. So, yeah, if you want to join in any games, then uh, by all means, have a look at the forums. It's www.sheffieldboardgamers.com. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening in. Uh, I hope everybody stays safe, stay at home, and we'll speak to you soon. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.